When families experience loss, they need to heal, and regardless the cause of the loss, that healing usually calls for sharing and connection. That's the purpose of a nonprofit called the Compassionate Friends Boston. On Sunday, the group will take part in a candle lighting to mark lost family members and new connections extending around the world. We'd like to welcome the co-leader of the group in Boston, Chuck Snekvig. Thank you very much for being Hi, with us, Chuck. Thanks. Good to be here. First of all, talk about the loss that, that concerned you and your family and, and, and why that led you to this group. Yes, well, um, my son Andrew, uh, seven years ago, died of stage four colon cancer and he was 38. And he, had, he left behind a, a lovely wife and three young boys. And uh, it was devastating to us. And as a result of that, uh, someone said, hey, you might want to check out the Compassionate Friends, which is really for parents that have lost children. And uh, we really fit that category. And that's how we found the Compassionate Friends. How, how, how is that different? Because there are many families who have relatives who pass. Right. And it's a, it's a rather conventional thing. I mean, they mm -hmm. do feel grief, and they deal with it yeah. collectively in a family. But, right. but uh, what's the difference? You lose a, a, a child. Uh, yes. you don't, that's not normal. No, it's not. And as we're talking, I, I had told you previously, 40 years ago, we lost our first child, our oldest child, Amy, in a car accident. And the moment we realized that she was gone, we looked at one another and said, our life will never be the same after this. Because the children's a whole different thing. It's, they're your pride and joy. They're going to live forever. And, and when something happens to them before it's their time, it's totally devastating. And so it's a special category and you can't understand it until, you, and we hope nobody is in that category, until you lose a child. What was it like when, when you and your wife got involved in this group? Well, the first thing we found out was our friends that were close to us, our church friends and other friends, they're good for you know a few months and then they have other things to do and they forget that you're still going through a lot and you really go through pain and going through the process um, uh, for a while, for a long time, forever. And when you get together with a group of people that ha are, you know, have had the same experience, you relate to one another. And when you say something, they say, yeah, I've experienced that too. Or, you know, you, you learn from one another. It's, uh, it's very helpful. And, and there's no shelf life for talking about this. You can bring no. this up. You know. Yeah, I mean, people say after five, I mean, we say after five years, you're at the, at the beginning of the grief process. And people don't realize that. Um, I think the only difference, because there's been some time, is that you don't think about it as often. But when you think about it, it can be just as devastating. So you, you, you know, that's, I think the only difference is that first year you're kind of in shock. And then after that, you're able to process it a little bit more. But it does get better, but it's always there. Well, being a compassionate friend means at first uh, there are people who are going to listen to your story, but right. later on you're going to be listening to stories too, right? Yes, it go, you do. It's a two-way thing, and it's uh, we call it a self-help group because we help each other. And uh, the idea is you don't give each other advice; you share your own story, and people can learn from one another. And uh, but we've had so many people that come and say, "I'm so glad we found this group because we feel like." That everybody here understands what we're going through. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Chuck Snekvik from the Compassionate Friends Boston. Uh, Chuck, there's an event coming up this weekend, right. the Candles. It's going to be at one location, but it's also really uh, stretching around the world. How does that work? So uh, this started, I think, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, having a candle lighting once. It's the second Sunday of December at 7 o'clock. And so around the world, People are lighting candles all over the world. It starts in New Zealand because the time zones. And at 7 o'clock, people in New Zealand get together and light a candle. It could be a huge group. It could be a small group in a home. But they light a candle at 7, remembering their uh, son or daughter that, you know, that died. And so it goes around the globe. And for ours, it's going to be this Sunday. It's the second Sunday, and it's going to be... Um, at the Reservoir Church, they're letting us use uh, the facility you know, in Ringe Avenue here in Cambridge, and it's at 6 o'clock, but we light the candles at 7. And of course, we should mention that e even though this event is happening in Cambridge, I think most of your members are from right here in the city in Boston? Yeah, and this event, mostly, most of the people that will go are people that come to our group, which is monthly, meets monthly down at Trinity Church in Boston. 
and uh, we meet on the second, or the, uh, the first Tuesday of every month, first Tuesday at six o'clock. So this is a continuation of that, but they can bring family and friends to this. Anybody can come to the event on Sunday night. Now, I'm, I'm picturing this with all these people, the candles in the dark. It's almost like a holiday reunion. You come back to it. What does it feel like when, when you're out there with this? Well, uh, I've been to three or four of them, and it's power. I think the word is powerful because we have, at the beginning, we have uh, people uh, share stories. We have people read poems. We have, and it is, uh, it's not faith-centered. I mean, people have faith, but it's something that everybody would feel comfortable at. But uh, we give a little talk. We have people that sing songs. And, um, and then when it comes, we say the names of each person that died, and we light a candle for them. And it's, I, I, the only thing I can say is it's, it's very moving. It's emotional. And it makes you sad, but it also makes you realize, hey, we're all holding a candle for the one that we love so much. And so there's a sense of unity in the process. We should mention that if people want to get more details about the event or, or any of the ongoing activities mm -hmm. of your group, what's the best way for them to make contact? So uh, the Compassionate Friends, of course, you can Google it, but you'll get the national office, the Compassionate Friends, TCF. Uh, email is tcfofboston, tcfofboston, gmail.com, at gmail.com. Thank so. you very much for being with us. Yeah, thank you. Chuck Snekvik from the Compassionate Friends, Boston. Thank you.